Hello and welcome to the Vision and Light Unit Internalization video. My name is Sean Tamarisk of Kitt, Massachusetts. For this unit, the big unit question is, how do animals use vision and other senses to survive in their environment? The anchor phenomena is, a population of toke geckos in a rainforest in the Philippines has decreased since the installation of new highway lights. They're having trouble surviving in their environment, and the only change has to do with highway lights. Throughout this unit, students will come back to this question of why are these toke geckos disappearing? Look at these guys. They learn a little bit about where the Philippines are located, the fact that it's a tropical rainforest, and they compare the environment before the highway lights with the environment after highway lights, ultimately coming the, to the conclusion that toke geckos are very sensitive to light and can't see their prey when there's too much light, even at night. So before we begin, please go ahead and take care of these steps. You're going to need to have copies of the focus task and unit assessment and a, pencil, and a pen or pencil as well to answer questions as we go through this video. So why is this unit important anyway? Well, it's starting to build a foundation for students understanding the idea of adaptations and how certain traits help all animals survive, but traits are different from one animal to the next. It also lays the foundation later on for students in physiology to learn more about how the eye, the nervous system, and other sensory receptors work. It lays the foundation for students understanding how light works so they can go deeper into the physics of light in later years. Students also get extended work with simulations in this particular unit, learning the importance of only changing one variable at a time in a simulation, and then seeing the effects of what happens. Students also take on the role of conservation biologists, and in so doing, learn about the important work that conservation biologists do throughout the world, helping to study and save species from the impacts of habitat loss, climate change, and other factors. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the chapters. Our first big question is, how do animals use their senses to get information about their environment? We start by introducing the Tokay Gecko and the unit problem to students. Students are challenged to identify different materials just based upon one sense at a time, such as their sense of touch or their sense of smell. The materials are placed in film canisters and sealed. Here, for example, I've got a piece of fake fur, and over here we've got some sticks of cinnamon. Students are then challenged to open the container and use only that sense to identify what the object is and whether or not the object would be helpful for their survival. Next, they learn about structure and function and specifically focus on the structures of our sense organs, such as this pig's nose here and why it's shaped this way with two holes in the middle. Next, students read the book Investigating Animal Senses about a class of students who decides to ask questions about and then investigate how certain animals use their senses to find food. Students are introduced to the idea of only testing one variable at a time through the trial and error of these students in this class. Next, students watch several videos of animals using their senses, such as these bears here using their sense of eyesight in order to survive, in this case, to capture fish to eat for food. All this leads up to students understanding Progress Build 1. Animals have sensory structures that allow them to learn about their environment by getting information from it. Learning about the environment helps animals survive. Students demonstrate their understanding of this progress build on the first focus task. Go ahead and take a few minutes to complete the focus task and then check back here for the answers. Go ahead and pause now. All right, for the first part, you should have selected A. Armadillos use their sense of smell to find food. That's the only sense that is mentioned in the reading itself. Next, if you haven't already, go ahead and complete the multiple choice questions on the next part of the focus task and then check back here for answers. Go ahead and pause now. All right, these are the answers you should have gotten. Go ahead and check them now. All right, on to big question number two. How does light allow an animal to see something? Students are gonna work with what is known as a mystery box shown here. It's a box that's completely sealed except for one hole so that no light can get, can get in into the box when you're looking through the hole. When you look through the hole, you'll no, you don't see anything in here. The idea is to teach students that without light, we cannot see anything. What happens, though, if we open this box and we add light from the other side? Well, once we do that, we get to see what special creature is inside. Hey, is that Spruce the sea turtle? Note that once the box is closed and no more light can come in, we can no longer see Spruce the sea turtle. Students then explore the unit simulation, noting that there are different variables you can control on it, and then see the effects. The simulation shows light streaming from a light source, hitting prey, going into a predator's eyes, and forming an image in the predator's brain of what it can see. Students will decide which variables they would like to alter, such as the amount of light, and then investigate what happens when that change is made. In this particular case, turning the light off means the predator no longer has to form an image of the prey in their brain. 
Students go on to read the book Handbook of Animal Eyes, learning that all kinds of animals have light receptors in their eyes that receive information from the outside world and transmit that information to the brain. Next, students draw or work on the computer to create a model of how light travels from a light source to, to an object in the mystery box, and then out of the mystery box, reflects off that object, and then goes out of the mystery box and into an observer's eye, forming an image in their brain. Students read the text I See What You Mean to further solidify the idea of how light travels travels to our eyes from a light source and how we use scientific explanations to understand the world. Next, students look at three different models of how light travels and have a class discussion on which one is correct and why. At this point, students should understand Progress Build 2. In order for an animal to get visual information about an object in its environment, light from a source needs to get to the object, reflect off of it, and get to the animal's eye with information about the object. At this point, students complete Progress Build 2 focus task, diagramming how an eye receives information about an object in a mystery box. Go ahead and complete the focus task now, and then check back here for answers. Pause now. Great, here's an exemplar response to this first part. Go ahead and read it over and check the diagram and compare it to your own. Pausing now. And if you haven't already, please complete the multiple choice questions that go along with the focus task. And here's the answers. Go ahead and check your work. All right, on to big question number three. How does an animal know when it is looking at its prey? We start this part of the unit by going back to the simulation and looking more closely at what happens once light enters a predator's eye. We notice that when light hits the light receptors, they glow or are triggered. That causes a signal to be sent down through the optic nerve to the brain, which enables the brain to process that information and form an image of the prey. Students diagram what's happening in the simulation and then read more about processing and recognizing information from the environment. They read the book Crow Scientist about a group of researchers who wanted to see if crows recognize people solely based upon their faces. Students learn that when we look at something, we compare that object to our memory and see if we've seen that object before. Students then investigate a variable in the simulation called type of prey, which enables them to switch back and forth between a toxic prey and a safe prey to eat, and investigate the reaction that this predator has to these different types of prey. Again, the focus is on what's happening within the predator's eye and brain as it compares the object in front of it to memories of similar objects. We call this processing and recognizing. Then it has a reaction based upon whether the prey is safe to eat or not. If it's safe to eat, it opens its mouth and gets ready to chow down. Students also do a series of card sorts to help them understand and remember the steps that take place within a predator's brain. At this point, students should understand Progress Build 3, shown here. After light from the object enters the animal's eye, it hits the light receptors in the eye that respond to the light. The light receptors then send the information about the object from the light to the brain, which processes the information to form an image of the object. Then the brain compares this image to memories to decide which action to take. Here's Progress Build 3 focus task. Take a few minutes to complete it and then check back here for answers. Pause now. Great, here's an exemplar from the task. Take a minute to read it and compare it to yours. And if you haven't already, please complete the multiple choice questions and then check back here. Great, here's the answers. And on to the next big question. Why do different animals need different amounts of light to see well? This part of the unit starts with an observation from a scientist who tests two different animals, skinks and geckos, to see what happens when you put prey under a light in a cup in front of them. The scientist notes that the skink immediately tries to get the prey, but the gecko ignores it and doesn't react at all. Can the gecko even see the prey? This observation gets students thinking about the fact that not an all animals see the same way. Students read the book Seeing Like a Shrimp and Smelling Like a Snake to learn about senses besides vision, such as the amazing sense of touch that the star-nosed mole's nose has on it. Students then compare different nocturnal and diurnal animals and note that often nocturnal animals have different sensitivities to light compared with diurnal animals. There's a sort of color by numbers activity to represent different animals with different sensitivities to light to show that one, the animal on the left wouldn't be able to pick out the snake, whereas the animal on the right would. Students return to the Handbook of Animal Eyes to do more comparisons of nocturnal and diurnal animals and learn more about light sensitivity. An eye model using these materials shown here. Here's an example model with the pupil being represented as a hole in the box, the receptors in the back of the box, and the optic nerve as yarn hanging out the back of the box. By this point, students should understand Progress Build 4, shown here. 
Students apply this understanding to return to finally solve the problem of the Tokei Gecko in Progress Build 4 Focus Task. Take a few minutes to complete it now and then check back here. You should have written that the environment is now too bright for the Tokei Gecko because of the street lights. Go ahead and take a second to compare your answer to the one here, noting that students will be graded on their ability to write a solid claim, support it with evidence, and write a clear explanation. All right, on to the end of unit assessment. This question assesses progress build one. Go ahead and take a few minutes to complete it and then check back here. Great, here's the answers for this one. Students are simply identifying structures that are used for sensing. Here's a question that assesses progress build two about the path of light to a predator. Go ahead and complete it now. And here's the answer for this one. And here's a question that assesses progress build three, comparing dog and rabbit vision, it includes a short reading and a table with data. Go ahead and take a minute to complete it and then check back here. And the correct answer for this one is D. Students should be able to figure out from this table here that dogs can sense better because they have more receptors. Finally, here's a question that assesses progress build four. Go ahead and complete it now. And the answer here is D as well, which once again aligns to the progress build four. All right, that's all we got. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to be as prepared as possible for your students. If you haven't already, I recommend doing these seven things to be ready to teach the unit. Thanks again.